This is Southern Cross News with Joe Palmer. Good evening everyone and welcome to Southern Cross News. First tonight, an 82-year-old woman has died after being hit by a vehicle in Newtown in the early hours of this morning. Tasmania Police says a 45-year-old man was driving to work when the incident occurred. Belonging strewn across the road, the solemn aftermath of a tragic incident. At around 6am this morning, uh, police were called to an accident involving a pedestrian on Forster Street in Newtown. An 82-year-old woman was crossing the road when she was struck. The driver called emergency services and did what he could to help her, but sadly her life couldn't be saved. But it just it does appear to be um, a tragedy certainly for the person that was involved who was driving and the family of the lady who has died. The area cordoned off as a crime scene as investigations were carried out. The normally busy residential street closed for more than four hours. Part of the investigation as to the circumstances surrounding um, how that, this happened. I noticed anything until I took the dog out at 6.30 or 7 and um, the police were, were there. There were a lot of cars and people walking up and down. Calls for the public to come forward with any information. Anyone that saw the vehicle at the time, the white Toyota Hilux, or uh, the lady walking to come forward and provide um, some information. Early investigations suggest there were no contributing factors to this crash, with Tasmania police calling it just a tragic accident. The conditions were quite dark and it was drizzling at the time. Um, at the time the lady was wearing dark clothing. This young boy recently lost his own grandmother. He wanted to place flowers at the scene to offer condolences to the woman's loved ones. Louise Hedger, Southern Cross News. Independent Braddon candidate Craig Garland has launched a blistering attack on the Liberal Party. It comes after the North West fisherman revealed he was convicted of assaulting an off-duty police officer in the 1990s. The Liberals say Mr Garland isn't fit for office and are questioning why Labor has preference the candidate. Fisherman and Braddon contender Craig Garland doesn't hold back the punches when it comes to the Liberal Party. They're an elitist, self-entitled pack of pricks. But the independent candidate has today found himself in hot water after revealing he was convicted for assaulting an off-duty police officer in the 1990s. He's admitted to being in the wild brawl in Geelong, which ended in the woman receiving a broken wrist. Really does put a very big question mark over his fitness to run for public office. Mr Garland maintains it was a case of self-defence after his friends were attacked, but pleaded guilty to the charge, receiving a three-month suspended sentence. He says the experience changed his life for the worse, although insists he'd do the exact same again. I've got nothing to hide whatsoever. I'm standing up for my community and my fishing buddies. And in Geelong, if I was faced with the same situation again and I had two young blokes being chased down the road, being bashed, I'd do the same thing again. Environment and fisheries are hot button issues for the angler, who polled 2,000 votes as an independent in the recent state election and sits number two on Labor's by-election preferences. The Labor Party have to explain whether they did their due diligence on Craig Garland before they gave him preferences. We've got our how to vote cards already out there um, where you know where voters want to put their preferences is a matter for them. I'm just concentrating on my campaign. Even if that campaign was trying to hook voters perhaps thinking of supporting the outspoken fishermen. Today Labor pledged to ban all super trawlers in small pelagic fisheries. We will extend the ban on super trawlers from what was put in place when Labor was last in government. That would protect foundation species in the ecosystem from being picked off by smaller super trawlers combing the oceans. It's got the support of Mr Garland, even if he has this to say about his record of personally not voting. Uh, if you put a bunch of peanuts up for election and you don't agree with any of them or trust any of them, you keep voting for them, you're perpetuating that cycle. A cycle he could soon be a part of. Sean McComish, Southern Cross News. Premier Will Hodgman is labelling the cancellation of some flights to King Island as concerning. Regional Express yesterday announced it will be reducing the number of flights between King Island and Melbourne following an ongoing dispute. The airline says it could not afford to pay increased airport fees after the council announced it had no other choice but to double them. We'll have ongoing discussions with them as they work with Rex and other airline carriers to 
ensure that there is um, a secure uh, and consistent travel opportunity for people coming into or out of the island. The airline says from August, four flights will be dropped from its weekly service from Melbourne. Tasmania has seen a record-breaking number of tourists according to a new survey with over 300,000 international guests visiting the state in the past 12 months. It's up 20% from previous years with tourists from China, the United States and New Zealand increasingly flocking to our shores. For our international visitors, unsurprisingly it's about our food, our beverage, our clean water, our clean environment, our big nature and our wildlife. They're the key experiences that our internationals are after. But what's really important is that the, the level of growth um, is significant, it's sustained um, and it's consistent. And this National Visitor Survey also showed international visitors brought in over $500 million to the state's economy. Heavy rains in the west and southwest have made their way downstream with the Huon River breaking its banks early this afternoon. Council crews closing the Channel Highway between Main Road and Flood Road with traffic diverting back onto the highway via Sale Street. Police are urging motorists to drive to the conditions and obey road closure signs. And obviously uh, when police are driving uh, down there if there's a, an accident just to slow down and, and listen to what we're saying and we'll continue that message through the winter. Conditions are expected to ease in coming days. Marine rescuers have spent much of the day working to free a pod of bottlenose dolphins who became stranded near Cremorne this morning. Staff from Dupipwi and a local oyster farm all pitching in to ensure the gentle animals survived their misadventure. Bottlenosed dolphins stranded in the receding tide at Pipe Clay Lagoon. Staff from a nearby oyster farm noticing their fins sticking out of the shallows just after seven this morning. So they, they came over and uh, uh, four were stranded. Quickly donning waders to keep the animals safe and calling in the experts. And we've been able to stabilise them, orientate them in the right way and provide environmental protection. Hours spent to keep them stabilised, using cloths to keep them wet. Rather distressed, but uh, since we've We've got them up on, onto their bellies and, and got their tails in the water and things like that. Uh, they've calmed right down and th th they've become quite vocal. This marine biologist heading up the operation says it's the third time this decade dolphins have become stranded here and that this pod was probably chasing food. They like to chase bait fish in small, shallow, protected areas that improves their, their, their fishing techniques, but they can get stranded as the tide recedes. And it's just due to misadventure that they are now um, high and dry. A barge brought in used for relocation, taking the strength of six people to lift just one on board. How would you describe the experience? Um, completely overwhelming. Um, I'd like to see this right through to the end. A team of about 20 rescuers have been working together this morning to move these dolphins to calmer waters. They're usually a little bit disorientated, so we need to take them to a beach where they can access deep water quickly and without any obstructions they can move deeply quickly out to deeper water. Transported to Roaches Beach several kilometres away, volunteers pitching in, helping them back to freedom. Hopefully no more dolphin misadventure for a while. I think everything's going to be all right, actually. Louise Hedger, Southern Cross News. A last-ditch attempt to save the Launceston show from folding has been set up after it was axed due to low attendance numbers last year. The National Trust of Tasmania has launched a financial appeal to fund the event and says it's an important part of the state's heritage and provides local farmers with the chance to showcase their produce and livestock. The show is the second longest running in Australia. It's been five years since Australia's controversial offshore detention centre policy was introduced, first in Manus Island in Papua New Guinea and then Nauru. Activist groups joined together in Hobart today protesting the management of refugees by displaying photos of 12 men who have died in detention. This is five years of lives destroyed, five years of rampant uh, abuse of human rights, five years of innocent people uh, having their lives completely disrupted. Seeking asylum is, is a human right and Australia has done the wrong thing by these people. 
Around 1,400 recognised refugees currently remain on these islands. Over 70 children have been beading bracelets for charity. Today learning the tricks of the trade with the help from Francesca. The Hobart-based company has joined forces with Variety Tasmania, raising money for disadvantaged children. Oh, it's fantastic to partner with Francesca. Uh, you can see around the room so many smiling faces as they get creative and support Tasmanian children in need. We love having them involved. They're bringing a whole new level of energy and creativity, so it's really exciting. We love having them here and they're tapping into their creative side. We've had so many different bracelets made, which is really exciting, and it's cool to see a new variation on what we do. Today's event raised nearly $3,000. One of the state's oldest welfare troops, the RSPCA, is celebrating 140 years fighting animal cruelty. The charity group was set up in Hobart in 1878, focusing on overworked horses and dog fighting. Over a century later, the organisation continues to advocate for the We're protection of animals. We're all very excited to have made 140 years and... Um the staff are excited and we, we've, we find this a very special moment. There are a group of people in the community who don't fully understand how to be kind to animals. Uh, it's unfortunate, they are always there and we have to protect these animals from those sorts of people. RSPCA's Hobart shelter closed earlier this year but other centres are open across the state. Now let's take a look at the day's business and finance news with thanks to TASPLAN, your local super fund. Australian shares have closed higher with banks and miners leading strength across most parts of the market while the Aussie dollar was boosted by strong jobs numbers. The ASX 200 index has risen by 17.6 points. A short time ago, the Australian dollar was trading at 74 US cents and 109.34 New Zealand cents. Bombers coach Darren Winter has fired a rocket at the Tasmanian State League, claiming the carve-up of the northwest recruiting zones is creating an uneven playing field. He says it's helped teams like Launceston build the best list in the competition, despite the Blues sitting below Lauderdale on the TSO ladder. The Bombers are on a hot streak despite a shaky start to the season, but a trip to Windsor Park on Saturday to play Launceston is never an easy task. We're a better team than last year's team. We're a much better team, much more rounded. Um, we're quicker. Um, uh, got some, we're a really pretty young team too, so they've got a bit more experience under their belt. Winter says Lauderdale could be even better if the league hadn't closed the door on them when the Devonport and Burnie TSL teams folded. He says Launceston now has the best list in the competition after its zone was extended and insists Lauderdale should have been given an opportunity to lure players south. When you're talking about the most talented players in the, in the state, young players, um, and going to two clubs, well, I thought that was pretty poor by the competition, to be honest, and then put a uh, hold on those players that they can only go to those two and that, that becomes their, their zone, I thought was pretty crappy. Launceston coach Sam Lonigan disagrees. When the, those two coastal clubs fell over, um, as a state, what, the, those, what those things need to do is actually galvanise us as a state, provide those kids with the right location. So um, I'm just doing what's best for the kids. Lonigan says young players need to stay close to home, school and friends, reflecting on his own experience as a teenage devil in the VFL. Looking back on that, it was probably the, one of the worst things I actually ever did. Um, so I think what's right at the moment is, is just making sure the kids have the right space and environment, environment for them. Um, there could be a level of unfairness to it, but the reality is sometimes in Tassie we've got uh, a landscape that's, that's not great. Andrew McCarthy, Southern Cross News. A Tasmanian cyclist who has spent more than two years battling lymphoma is about to return to competition. 19-year-old Zach Gilmore hopes to put a rough stretch behind him when he represents the TIS racing team this season. He's had arguably the toughest induction to a TIS team. Last year was meant to be Zach Gilmore's breakout season, but treatment for the blood cancer lymphoma sidelined him for a large chunk of racing. With his treatment now over, the tough teenager is ready to have another crack. Being with my bike during my treatment was one of the things that really got me through it. So now that all that's cleared and I'm back on the bike is like just really exciting. Gilmore must be cautious of how hard he trains. It's been a challenge just knowing where I'm at and just where I, where I can actually go to without pushing myself into a dangerous spot of getting sick again. Today, he was unveiled as part of the new look TIS team. 
It will include Olympian Georgia Baker, who returns to the squad as part of her lead-in to Tokyo 2020. Just her being able to, you know, be in Australia, um, do a really nice build-up to, towards those Olympic Games. So, yeah, we're super pleased that we can uh, contribute to that preparation. Baker will mentor Tassie's next generation, which includes 17-year-old Anya Lowe, who was recently named in the national under-19 road cycling team. I'm still very young, I guess, and I'd like to continue in the sport as long as possible. But yeah, I guess riding World Tour one day would be a great, is a great aim to have. The Tour of the Great South Coast and Queensland's Battle Recharge are the first events on the National Road Series calendar. Arrows goal shooter Sophie Gunn says Cavs will be hard to beat this year if the two teams square off in the State League Grand Final. The comments come despite the Northern Hawks leading the league ahead of its match against OHA in Round 16. We're just starting to hit form now really, after even with that loss last week it's just almost, you almost kind of need that as well, just to kind of kick you back into action, so yeah we're really looking forward to it. Meanwhile Gunn will need to be at her brilliant best against Cripps on Friday night. I've been enjoying my netball I'd have to say, it's been a good season so far and I yeah, look forward to us heading into finals. Play gets underway at 8pm. And finally in soccer, Olympia has appointed Rob Clark as its NPL senior coach from next season. Clark will take over the role from Dal Itchens, who will stay on with the Warriors as technical director and challenge league coach. In a letter to supporters, President George Mamarcus says the appointments offer the club the greatest opportunity for success in 2019 and beyond. Olympia currently sits fifth on the ladder. Good evening, I hope you all got through last night's strong winds without any damage. Uh, it started to settle down a little bit today. Uh, Hobart got to 13, 11 for Launceston and Burnie, Devonport a high of 12 degrees. Friendly Beach is the top today, well in front of the pack with 17 degrees. Flinders Island 15, St Helens 13, Low, Head, Grove and King Island 12, Smithton, Ooze and Strawn 11. The frontal cloud band moved across the state today from the northwest, containing the showers. The best fall today, 25 millimetres. That was at Mount Victoria. And the band of cloud with the front stretches east towards New Zealand and back to near Adelaide. Bright cloud swirls with a low well to our southwest and more cloud hugs the Great Australian Bight and a cold pool of air is south of that as well. Tomorrow a large high parks over northern South Australia, a trough nears our west coast and the cold front influences the New South Wales coast. The west to northwesterlies will tend more southwesterly to 20 to 30 knots and up to 35 knots over southern waters, swells pushing up to 6 metres. Gale warning for waters between Wineglass Bay and Low Rocky Point, a strong wind warning for the remainder. We also have a minor flood warning for the North and South Esk rivers along with the Hewan, Meander, Macquarie, Derwent and Ooze. A flood watch current for the rivers in the North, North West and North East and a warning to sheep graziers for the South East. Plenty on. Now for tomorrow, a showery windy day for Hobart, 10 the top, just 10 for Hewanville as well, a shower or two for Campania, 11 the maximum. Launceston, a top of 13 with a shower or two and a cool start. 12 the high for Devonport, same sort of forecast for Georgetown and 13 degrees. Burnie tomorrow expecting a shower or two, 12 the top, 12 for Wynyard as well. Showers in the west at Strawn, 11 the high. And in the east tomorrow, a possible shower for St Helens, 13 the top, 12 the high for Swansea, becoming windy for Port Arthur, 11. On Saturday, showers over the west and far south, a morning frost ahead of a fine day elsewhere. A bit of a change on Sunday with showers over the north, the west and central areas and possibly later over the far south and a few showers on Monday, more likely over the west and north. A late shower for Perth tomorrow, a little wet weather for Adelaide, Melbourne and Canberra, a windy 18 degrees in Sydney, fine for the other centres. Partly cloudy at the moment, 8 degrees in Hobart, 8 degrees in Launceston, 9 degrees in Devonport. The rain keeps falling down, Joe, and the river keeps filling up, so uh, let's hope it doesn't uh, spill over too much. Let's hope so. Thank you very much for that, Murph. That's all from the team. Have a great night.